Let's uh, talk about the mechanical advantage of a halogen bar. So to start off, we're going to look at the halogen bar as a class one lever. Uh, and just a basic definition of a class one lever. Uh, basically, your effort is going to be at one side of the bar. Your fulcrum would be in the middle of the bar, and then your load would be on the opposite side of the bar. That's kind of a really basic example of a class one lever is this picture on the screen here on the right. And uh, now let's just go over some equation in terms of how we get mechanical advantage. So we're going to take the distance of the effort arm to the fulcrum, and we're going to divide it by the distance from the resistance arm to the fulcrum. So if we look at this picture on the right, that green arm is showing the effort arm, and then the red arm or bar is showing the resistance arm. And you're literally just going to take the red part of the bar, the length of it, and divide it into the green part of the bar. Uh, the effort or the force, which you can see right here in the picture, that's usually the firefighter working on the opposite end of the tool. The fulcrum is usually the door frame, and we might see a couple of other examples of how the fulcrum might change today. And then the load itself, which is represented here, is usually the door and whatever locks are holding that door shut. That's your load that you have to defeat. Okay, when we look at the halogen bar, the overall length is 30 inches. Uh, and this is your standard halogen bar. I do realize, you know, they make them shorter and longer, but this is probably the most common size bar. It's so 30 inches, and that's what I'm going to focus on today. I realize this picture, you can't really see the tape measure that well, but just trust me, it's 30 inches. Uh, the first part that I'm going to look at is the width of the ads. So again, understand your effort arm in most of these scenarios is going to be the 30 inch length of the bar. Our resistance arm in this case is going to be the width of the ads, which is approximately two inches long, as you can see in this bottom left picture. So basically, if I take my resistance arm of two inches and I divide it into my effort arm, the 30 inch length of the bar, I get a 15 to one mechanical advantage, which you can see on the left side of the screen here is how I broke down that math. Now let's look at the length of the ads. The length is approximately six inches long and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take that six inch resistance arm and we're gonna divide it into the 30 inch effort arm and that is gonna give us a five to one mechanical advantage. So you can see that's a pretty big difference uh, between the width and the length of my ads. From, I go from a 15 to one to a five to one. Now, let's look at these a little bit closer here. My 15 to one mechanical advantage, the width of my ads on an inward, and I'm, these first few examples, it's all gonna be on an inward opening door. The pro here is that's a lot of mechanical advantage, 15 to one. It, it basically makes me 15 times stronger than I really am. That's how I look at it. Uh, and just as an example, I weigh 130 pounds myself, but let's say I put about 100 pounds behind the bar. If I multiply that by 15, now all of a sudden I'm up to 1,500 pounds. So you can see if I use this bar properly, this makes me a lot stronger than I really am. Now the con of using the width of my ads, the two inches, is that you only get two inches of spread here. Now that's, that's not that much, but uh, here's, a, here's a halogen tip. Okay, we just talked about how the ad's width is two inches. Now, the average door depth, which is what I'm measuring right here in this picture, is approximately an inch and three quarters. So when I think about when Hugh Halligan or whoever made uh, updates to this bar and they made the width of that ads two inches, just a quarter of an inch wider than the typical depth of a door, to me, it's genius because when you go to gap your door, the big thing I want to point out here is use the full potential of the tool. Okay, use the full two inches of spread. It's not a lot of spread, but it hurts the lock big time because it's, it's 15 to one mechanical. It's like 1,500 pounds I'm putting on that lock. Okay, so even if you look at this, this still shot here, but if you could see the forks of my bar, they are touching the door. Okay, I've, I've maxed out the full spread of the two inches. And again, that depth of the door and even the depth of that backside of the door from there, it's, a, it's an inch and three quarters. So I can already see in this picture, I'm going to say daylight, but I can see into the other room. That's how well that's gapped that door for me. Now, let's go back to the five to one. So now I'm looking at the length of my ads here. Uh, the pro here is that now instead of two inches of spread, I get six inches of spread with the length of my ads here. 
Now the con is it's a lot less mechanical advantage. But in this video, let's just look at the spread. If you get six inches on a door away from its frame, like you've got the door, you're in. And again, I'm, I'm kind of referring to inward opening doors here as I'm talking. Let's look at this plan of attack here. Again, an inward opening door. This is something I learned personally from the FDNY. I took a truck uh, company class from them. And also if you watch Mike Perrone, who's a retired FDNY firefighter, he shows this on his social media all the time, this uh, plan of attack, which is basically, we're gonna gap the door. We're gonna start with our 15 to one mechanical advantage of, with the width of the ads. And then we're gonna finish the door with the five to one mechanical advantage of the ads using the length of it. Because again, that gives you the six inches of spread. So there, I gap the door. I push the tool right to the door, use the full two inches, switch to my five to one, which gives six inches of spread to finish the door. And I, I tell my students all the time, if you, can, if you can open a door in two maneuvers, you look pretty cool doing it. Now, again, I'm a smaller firefighter. I love using the 15 to one because it's, it's the most bang for your buck on this tool, okay? It's the most mechanical advantage. Why not use an object to increase your spread with that much mechanical advantage? Uh, so one example here would be the back of your flathead ax. You can use it to increase your spread. Now in my department, we use eight pound flat hat axes. And normally when I'm doing this technique, if I'm using an object to increase my spread, it's because it's a tough door. And normally I couldn't gap it the full two inches in the first place because it was a tough door. So a lot of times with a, with a uh, eight pound flat hat ax, I can't even fit it in there. However, I could use the blade of the ax. And I mean, it doesn't seem, it's only a, probably a couple millimeters thick, but sometimes that's all I need to pop a really tough door. This is something else I've been seeing recently. Lots of people are using their wedges to increase the gap. Uh, again, you could use a wood wedge. Sometimes they, they, they'll chip or splinter, but a metal wedge will work good, good for that too. Uh, and again, shout out to Mike Perone here. He's using a piece of a cut up uh, old cutting board that they had. Same thing, he's just using it as a spacer. Uh, to create more of a gap. I thought that was pretty genius myself. So there, we looked at the ad's width and the ad's length. Now let's look at the pick length, which is in the right-hand bottom picture. So same thing, the, the length of the pick is the same as the length of the ads, and it is approximately six inches long. So when I take that resistance arm of six inches and divide it into 30, I get the same mechanical advantage of five to one, same as my length of my ads. If you're wondering when to use the pick, a lot of times people will use it for a technique called the baseball bat swing. And I apologize, I don't have any videos of the baseball bat swing, but if you use YouTube and uh, search it, you will find lots of other firefighters who have videos of the baseball bat swing. And I'll just point out, normally we'll be using the baseball bat swing on doors with a wooden frame. Now we're gonna look at the ads pick triangle, which is this bottom left-hand picture here. Uh, basically I've got the tape measure, or so I've got the ads in the pick resting on the table. That is where my load would be, and I measure up to the top here, which is approximately five inches, because that's where my fulcrum is gonna be. If we take that five inch resistance arm now, using the ads pick triangle, and we divide five into 30, now we get a six to one mechanical advantage. Now, six to one versus the five to one, it doesn't really sound like much, but sometimes a little more mechanical advantage is all you need. This is one of my students. Uh, she's about to finish this door. I'll just point out this is an outward opening door in this instance. Uh, she's got the length of her ads there. And you're going to see she tries it a couple of times. It doesn't work. So she just switches to the ads pick triangle. And it works beautifully for her. So again, sometimes a little more is all you need. She can't get it. Switches the mechanical advantage. Gets it no problem. I want to take a moment here and talk about advanced mechanical advantage. Um, because I literally just told you the length of your ads gives you approximately a five to one mechanical advantage. And I, I was specifically referring to an inward opening door. Now, basically this, this slide, I have another instructor slide in my slide. And this is actually, I believe this is from Clay McGee. Uh, now he's showing at the bottom here, you can see that he's saying the length of his ads uh, is giving him a 15 to one mechanical advantage. And we'll just, we'll just go through this picture on the right quickly. He's pointing out his fulcrum. Okay, he's got his, his effort arm, which would be the 30 inch length of his halogen bar. And then he's showing, because this is where your door's edge would be. 
He's showing the distance, the resistance arm from the door's edge or the load to the fulcrum is approximately two inches. So what he's saying is also right, okay? He's taking his, the two inches, the resistance arm, and he divides it into the 30 inch bar. And this is where he gets his math here, right? Two divided by 30 is 15 or 15 to one mechanical advantage. So it's like, well, who's right here? And the answer is we're both right because you need to understand on an outward opening door, the length of your ads, yes, it is going to start as a 15 to one, but as the load transfers to the tip of the ads, then it turns back into a five to one mechanical advantage. Here is the fulcrum or the door frame. And right now this is where the load or the door is, but watch as you start to force this door, the load transfers to the tip of the ads. So now that's where the load is. So again, it starts as a 15 one, as it transfers, it turns into a five to one. To me, once I break it down like this, then it makes a lot more sense in my head. Now let's move on to the Halligan as a class two lever. And just, again, a really basic overview. Again, in the class one lever, this fulcrum would have been in between the effort and the load, but you can see in a class two, the fulcrum has now moved to the other side of the load. So this hopefully kind of resembles what a wheelbarrow would look like. If this is the handle, this would be the wheel that is on the ground and then your load is in between the two. But to get the mechanical advantage, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take the resistance arm and divide it into the effort arm to get our mechanical advantage. So when we look at the Halligan as a class two lever, it's actually when we're using the forks, that's when it turns into a class two lever. And in this picture on the right, you can see the load is pointed out with the red arrow, which is going to be your door. And the fulcrum is the green arrow, which is the door frame again. And again, your effort arm would be the bar and your resistance arm is basically going to be the distance between the fulcrum and the load. Now, how far you drive the forks in matters. And it matters because the further you drive them in, you're making your effort arm shorter when you do that, or your lever is shorter. So again, we can look at the overall length of the Halligan as 30 inches. And a lot of people, so if we look at the bottom picture, you can see the overall length of the forks is six inches, but a lot of people wanna know the length of where the crotch of the forks is. And if you don't know what the crotch is, it's, it's literally what it sounds like. It's right here. Okay, if you pretend these are little legs, that would be the crotch. And it is approximately five inches. I realize it's more like, four and a half probably but i'm going to stick with five because math is not my forte when i talk about driving the forks in if i drove the forks in and this is kind of the standard that people teach you're going to drive the forks in until the crotch is in line with the back of the door frame and the reason people teach that is because it prevents your tool from slipping out uh, of the door in the frame but understand if i drive my tool in that five inches to the crotch of the forks I've just made my effort arm shorter. Okay, so my effort arm is now 25 inches. My resistance arm is gonna stay the same, the distance between my fulcrum and my load at approximately two inches. So if we look at my math on the left here, I take my 25 and divide it by two, and I get approximately 12.5 to one mechanical advantage. Now let's say I drive my forks in only three inches instead of right to the crotch. Now my effort arm, it's a bit longer. I, I only drove it in three inches, so I, that's all I lost. So my effort arm is 27 inches. If I take my same resistance arm of two inches and divide it into 27, now I get about 13.5 to one mechanical advantage. And let's say I only drive my forks in the two inches. Now my, my effort arm's still 28 inches long uh, and my resistance arm is two inches. So if I do that math, that ends up being a 14 to one mechanical advantage. So again, you can see how, depending how far you drive your forks in, it's gonna change your mechanical advantage. But to me, even if I leave it, if I drive it in the five inches and I, I only get 12.5 to one mechanical advantage, that's still the second strongest part of my bar. If I look at the width of my ads as my 15 to one is the strongest part, my forks is the second strongest part. And again, to me as a smaller firefighter, that's important to me because I need all the mechanical advantage I can get. I also want to point out, this isn't much different when we were looking at the length of our ads uh, on an outward opening door and how the load changed on our ads. Well, in, in this instance, the fulcrum kind of changes with our forks as we watch this video. It starts in with the edge of the frame that's closest to me and then it switches to the far end, okay? So 
my fulcrum was there. Uh, but now when I'm using my forks in this manner, which is bevel to the door, my fulcrum can change to this far side. Okay. And the, the importance of knowing this is, is my resistance arm is now longer. Okay. I, if I measure it with this red bar on the screen and it's approximately five inches. So now my effort arm is 25 inches. My resist, I divide five into 25. I get about a five to one mechanical advantage as my fulcrum changes with this force. Now let's just look at some pros and cons of the forks. Uh, again, I get a lot of mechanical advantage. Even if I, like I said, if I drive it in the five inches, I still get a 12.5 to one mechanical advantage. But if you look at this and I've in this left-hand picture, I've just got my bar, my halogen bar laying flat on a table, but you can see the tips of the forks only come off the table about an inch and a quarter. So when I use them to spread a door away from the frame, I might only get an inch and a half, two inches max on that spread. So again, the pro, I get a lot of mechanical advantage, but I don't get a ton of spread. Now, don't worry, because again, I've, I learned this from Mike Perrone, use something to increase your spread. Now I've seen Mike Perrone use the, the head of his ax. In this case, my students, they were using the, the handle of the ax. We got a rubber grip on it. So it just, it catches really well here. And you'll see how this will increase our spread with, of the forks. And go ahead. And I mean, that increased it enough, they, for, they forced the door open with that maneuver. I thought I should also mention that depending if the door is inward or outward opening, it switches how you place your tool on the door uh, and essentially changes the class of lever that you're using the halogen bar as. Uh, so if we look at this picture on the left, this is a firefighter working on an outward opening door. Uh, you can see they've got the, I'll call this the corner of the halogen is on the fulcrum or the door frame. And then the ads pick triangle is on the door itself, which is the load. So in this instance, the fulcrum is in between firefighter and the load, making it a class one lever. But if we look at this picture on the right, this is a firefighter working on an inward opening door. And you can see how the tool is just reversed essentially. Now the ads pick triangle is placed on the fulcrum or the door frame and the corner of the halogen is against the door or the load. So now the load would be in between the firefighter at the far end of the bar and the fulcrum or the door frame itself, making it a class two lever. And in this example, this is the ads pick triangle, but this would be the same if you were just using the length of your ads, for example, to force a door. Uh, but essentially the numbers don't change because our resistance arm in both of these cases is still gonna be five inches and the five divided in to the 30 inch bar would give you a six to one mechanical advantage. Push this, watch how easy this moves for him. That's a lot different, eh? Compared to what his, uh, see how much more space he has there? Compared to when he was pushing with his five to one? Good, Franco, now go back to your ads and you're gonna put it on the back of the door frame. Good, just take that ax out because we don't want to chop somebody's arm off on the inside. And you're gonna try to push or pull that, that bar towards the door. What can he do if he still doesn't have enough leverage here? So first, what again, what's the strongest part of this bar? Which way should he push it if he wants a 15 to one? Yeah, so try pushing this down. Good, way more spread, beautiful. Now go back, push the bar towards the door and you're in. Nice job.